Welcome to Dr. Quentin Richmond's daily television broadcast, Road to Eternal Life. Dr. Richmond would like to share his books, his music, and a daily message with your heart. Join him on his journey on the road to eternal life. Welcome to Eternal Life Ministry. We hope our service today will be a blessing to you and that it will help you in your trials and troubles today that you may have because we all have trials and troubles throughout the day. So God will help you for he says that his blessings will add no sorrow to it.
Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has brought salvation and redemption and grace unto all people in all nations. Let us lift our hands in praise and worship and adoration and honor unto Christ that died for us and forgave us of our sins while we were yet sinners. He died for us. I pray that you may know him and the power of his resurrections and of the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death, that you as an individual may know that Christ died for you, and as an individual you might attain by all means a resurrection to eternal life. God bless. Amen. Okay, my message today is a continuation of last week, Gospel in Women. This is part five, and our text is found in Esther 4.16. I also am my handmaidens fast likewise, and so will I go unto the king, which is not according to the law, and if I perish, I perish. Now, Esther was a Jew, but uh, King Anarus was a Gentile, and this was done in the foreign land. The Jews had been exiled into Babylon because of disobedience unto God, and there were five providence involved in this story. But we know that God is with everyone that tries to do something for God, and Esther decided that she wanted to do something for God and she decided that she would give her life for the cause of God. Now in the Holocaust, there were uh, six million Jews that were killed in the Holocaust. And the Americans lost in this campaign was 430,000. Likewise, we know that it took that many, and uh, Russia also had like 20 million people that died. They wanted to invade uh, Berlin themselves, so uh, Eisenhower let them do it, and they lost a lot of people, some like in all together, they lost around 20, 20 million people. That's a lot of people. And the Americans lost 430,000. Now this is uh, the deed that Esther is doing is comparable to the Holocaust. And so we need to give credit to Esther for what she has decided to do. And we find in Esther 3, 9, Haman spoke to the king, if it please the king, let it be written that they may be destroyed and I will pay 10,000 talents of silver into the king's treasure. Now Haman made this statement that he would give 10,000 talents. He probably lied to start with because I don't believe he could give 10,000 talents. Now one talent in silver is worth more than gold and one talent is worth about 75 pounds and 10,000 pounds of silver. Now silver was considered more expensive than gold in that day and he was going to give 10,000 talents of silver. So one silver in the ancient world was worth about 660,000 per U.S. dollar. The king of Egypt gave Julius Caesar uh, a sum of 6,000 talents to grant him the status of a friend and, and to uh, break this down, what this worth was worth was $3 billion, $3 billion in U.S. dollars. Haman offered to pay $6 billion, $600 million, for the privilege to kill all the Jews. So Haman was an evil person and he wanted to do horrendous evil to all the Jews and kill them all. 
And uh, in Esther 3.10, it said Haman's plan was written in the, the king, Anarus, and sealed with the royal province telling the officials to destroy, kill, and annihilate all the Jews, young and old, both women and children, and plunder possessions in a single day. <clears throat> now in Esther 4, 8, Hashtag gave Mordecai the copy of the writing of the decree that was given at Shushan to destroy them, the Jews, to show it to East Esther that she should go in to the king to make supplication unto him and to make requests before him. Uh, the king before the people. Now Esther was the king, was the queen of the uh, was the queen of King Anarus in his royal court. The problem here is that Esther never got permission from the king to appear in the court, and it was a common known thing at that day whether all royal princes and all that came before the king had to be first be given an, uh, an invitation to come into the court or else they would be killed. And the only way that they would be saved is if they were, if the king is extended unto them the golden scepter, that person that appeared would live. So in Esther 14:13. Mordecai advised the messengers to reply to Esther, If you keep silent, you and your father's house, and all the Jews will die. Who knows whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Esther replied to Mordecai, Have all the Jews in Shushan to fast for three days and nights, and I will fast also. After that I will go to the king, even if it's against the law. If I perish, I perish. Now Esther was not invited to, to, to appear before the king. So she knew that if the king did not extend the scepter, that she would die. But she decided she would do this for the Lord and would give her life for the cause of God. Now in the scripture it says, He that giveth his life shall save it but he that saveth his life shall lose it. So Esther decided to use the scripture. Uh, she may not have known that scripture at the time, but she in her own heart decided that she would do something for God. And this is a great event that she decided to do. And she knew that her life was in danger because all the royalties and everyone that appears, it was definitely stated in their constitution or what their law or procedures that they would be killed when they're not invited. So it is something real uh, unbelievable that Esther would decide that she was going to do this. And it's because of her great conviction to serve the Lord and to do what she could to save the people of Israel. In Esther 5, 1, 3, Esther put on a royal apparel, and she appeared before the king, and she stood out in the open court. And the king came, Anirus, and he saw his wife there, Esther, and he gave, he had compassion on her, and he extended the scepter, and therefore her life was saved. Now this is an astounding revelation that he would do this uh, being a Gentile and they adhered to their rules and laws very very faithfully and they wanted to the people to realize that what they say is gospel as we might put it but to them it is something that they must adhere to they must do and must conform with and when Esther in seven, Esther seven three six, three one and six, then Esther the queen answered and said, If I have found favor in thy sight, O king, and if it please the king, 
Let my life be given me at my petition, for we are sold and my people to be destroyed, to be slain. The king said to Esther, Who is he? And Esther said, The adversary, adversary and enemy is that wicked Haman. Now Haman had purpose. Now Haman lied to start with before the king because I don't believe he could ever give this 10,000 pounds of uh, talents of silver to start with. And then he said to the king that the Jews didn't obey the, the law and they transgressed against the law and discarded him as king. Now this was a lie because Mordecai didn't bow down. What had happened, Haman wanted, uh, after he got this decree from the king, that everyone should bow down to him. And he promoted Haman to the highest uh, rank of, next to the king. And he was favored at that point. But Haman was only after his own self-desire and needs. And he wanted people to bow down. He wanted to be a god. So whenever we get to that point that we want to show off, we will lose and we might fail but we have to be careful before God that we do all things pleasing to Him and that in all things worship and praise Him in spirit and in truth. Now Haman, uh, when he decided that Cain had given him this decree, that he could do that, perhaps uh, Anurus was not aware of really what Haman had in mind. And he just wanted, he just saw the 10,000 pounds talents, which was a great amount of money, about six million, six, six billion, six hundred million dollars. So he said, well, that should be a great thing. Uh, if they don't obey me, they don't obey the law, then they need to be killed. And so he gave Haman permission to do that. But as Esther appeared before the king, and the king realized what Esther said was true, and that Haman had purposed something that should not be, and that he lied to him. So Haman went out in this meantime, and he prepared gallows 50 cubits high. Now a cubit is 18 feet, and times 50 cubits is 75 feet high. So he wanted all the world to look upon Mordecai, because Mordecai was the one that would not bow to him. Now Mordecai did not bow to Haman because he respected God's word. No one should have other gods before me. He didn't want to break the commandments and he would not bow. So we need to think here how that the chil three Hebrew children uh, that were to be thrown into the fire of furnace, into the fiery furnace, that they said, whether God delivers me or not, we will not bow down. And so whether he delivers them or not, they did decided they would work for God and would adhere unto the promises and that God would deliver them. If not, then my soul is saved because I believe in God. Now on this gallery that, the more, the gall that Haman made, uh, to uh, the Jews, the king took off his ring, which he had taken, and taken from Haman, and gave it to Mordecai and sealed it, and no man can reverse it. So they hanged Haman on the galleries that he had prepared for Mordecai. Therefore, all the Jews were saved in the providence. So this was the great action that was done that Esther accomplished, which was a great thing for the women, for there is gospel in women. One of the greatest accomplishments of events in all of the Old Testament history was obtained by the gospel in Esther. There is no greater love than to lay down your life for your friend. Moreover, no one coerced or forced Esther to go before the king. She did this in her own thinking, in her own volition, her own decision, I'll lay down my life for the cause of God. And she saved all the Jews in five providence. Now this 
is a great thing that she accomplished. So there is gospel in women. And in John 5, 13, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And remember that you need to serve God and love him because God cares for you and God loves you and he came to save you. So will you in all you do seek God and be recommended unto him, reconciled unto him unto eternal life for the God loves you and he wants you to know there are gospel in women. The Lord bless. I will sing of the glorious dove of love That came from heaven with amazing love And now in his world my heart has a place To live my life with amazing grace His love can move mountains wide and tall Give hope to the lonely and strength to all He speaks of true love to the end of time When stars fall from heaven and sun doesn't shine I will sing of the glorious dove of love from heaven with amazing love And now in his world my heart has a place To live my life with amazing grace His love gives grace in the time of need Brings peace with light which to heaven leads Without true love I'm nothing at all I'd have no home and I'm bound to fall I will sing of the glorious dove of love came from heaven with amazing love And now in his world my heart has a place To live my life with amazing grace Tell of his love in heaven's bright shore And sing how our tears will be no more I'll love him forever and forever I'll sing Of the wonderful love he amazingly brings I will sing of the glorious dove of love that came from heaven with amazing love And now in his world my heart has a place To live my life with amazing grace I'll love him forever and forever I'll sing Of his wonderful love he amazingly brings
are deaf and mute The blind which we had led The halt and maim Who begged for bread They're not the same As seen on earth below In heaven they're changed And everyone made whole If you miss heaven You'll miss everything Up there with golden chimes we'll sing All former things on earth Will pass away In heaven eternity Is mine to stay We'll need no sun The glory of God's light The days won't end There is no night The pearly gates On streets of gold Christ said To living fountains Of water will be led If you miss heaven You'll miss everything Up there with golden chimes We'll sing All former things on earth will pass away in heaven eternity is mine to stay the hungry and poor called the off scourge who faint though they are holy pure and clean A mansion they'll have And kings and priests will be In heaven with Christ Through all eternity If you Thank you for watching Road to Eternal Life with Dr. Quentin B. Richmond. Dr. Richmond would like to invite you to inquire about his books, his songs, and his messages. If you are interested in contacting him, email him at qbrichmond at msn.com. That's qbrichmond at msn.com. <laughs>